Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and today you're in for a treat. We're going to be talking Seiko, Seiko Turtle. Now, depending on where you are in horology, Seiko may be a little bit of a stretch for you because they go from anywhere from a couple hundred dollars on up to the good ones, till you hit Grand Seiko, at which point you might be spending four, five, six, even seven thousand dollars. But today we're going to be talking about sort of a lower tier Seiko, which is the Seiko Turtle Prospects. And in fact, I have a special edition that I'm wearing. So let's go ahead and do the quick fist watch check and get that out of the way. And here she is. Please subscribe if you haven't already done that. And if you have, thanks so much for being with me. Today I am wearing the Seiko Blue Lagoon. Now, it matches my shirt, but you can't tell that because we're not in really great sunlight. Let's move around a little bit and see. Beautiful, ever-changing sunburst dial with a lot of different color blues in there. So guys, tell you what, let's turn this camera around and have a closer look. Well, here she is in all her blue gory, the, <laughs> not gory, glory, the Seiko Blue Lagoon. Now, there is a lot to know about this watch, but let's start out with some specs. So, pulling out the caliper here, I'll tell you that we have a 43 and a half dimension across. Lug to lug, it's kind of short for its size, and that is 47 and a half from lug tip to lug tip in this turtle shell back case. And when I put it on the watch, you'll see that's what allows a 43.3 millimeter watch to wear kind of small, which is a good thing because that means that a lot of different wrist sizes can fit this watch. She's kind of chubby, so let me give you the, the thickness. 13, 13 point something, maybe, maybe almost 13 and a half. And the lug width, let's go ahead and get that nailed down. The lug width is 22. And let's see if it tapers. I don't believe that it does. Ooh, well, it does. Tapers from 22 down to 20. Now, let's start by assessing what is really the remarkable or the most notable feature of the watch, which is the dial. I don't know if the camera is really doing it justice. There, I think you get a better look at it in the light. We have a very beautiful sunray blue. And then the dial or the bezel is composed of two different blues. So there really is three different blues on this watch. One on the dial, but the dial, because of the sunburst, it's, it's kind of ever changing. Um, but that's a medium blue on the dial, sunray. And then on this portion of the bezel, we have a dark kind of a navy blue. Might look black in this light, but I assure you to the naked eye, that is a navy blue. And then that portion there is a little closer to maybe robin's egg blue or maybe slightly darker. And of course, depending on the strength of the sunlight, uh, that, can, that can change. Now, this line of watches includes the, just the plain old Seiko Turtle, where everything is black. Those are relatively inexpensive. I want to say you can get them in the $200 range. If I'm wrong about that, do let me know in the comments. Do you have one? Do you love it? Then there's the Patty Edition, which, uh, boy, I had to rush out and buy that brand new. It was co-branded co with the um, Professional Association of Dive Instructors. And it's really the, the same watch with a slightly different darker sunburst blue dial, and um, I want to say a Pepsi bezel, and it says Paddy there. I believe I paid $400 for that one, and you can get them now used for probably $275, $280, maybe $300 for sure, on eBay. Um, some people who own the Paddy edition have asked me, Mark, is that going to come up in value? And the answer is no. It's not a limited edition. It's a special edition, co-branded, but Seiko never said how many they made, and trust me, they made tens of thousands of them, so they are in plentiful supply. Unlike this watch here, which is known as the Blue Lagoon Turtle. 
I believe there's a Blue Lagoon Samurai, which is slightly different than this one here. But in terms of the Blue Lagoon, this was a limited edition, which I'm pretty sure it says somewhere in the case back. It does, right, right here. I don't know if you're going to be able to read that. Limited edition. Now, it isn't numbered, and we don't know how many they made. I think it was 6,000 was what they said, which sounds like an awful lot of watches for a limited edition. But you have to understand, Seiko is a hugely popular brand, and at this price point, 6,000 actually isn't a whole lot. They did sell out, and um, I bought this watch over a year ago. I purchased it in Thailand, in Pattaya, Thailand, when I got bored one day. And um, U.S., it came out to around $550, which was the same price here in the States. And it's held its value, even gone up a smidgeroony. Okay. Now, I got to tell you, I think it's beautiful, but uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, some people, this is a crappy watch, but not for me. We have a nice satin finish here, which is slightly different than the brushed polish on the bracelet. And then um, this is a three-piece link but it's made to look like it was five, sort of like the Omega, except for it's just a cheat. That little high polished area there is just beveled right into the first portion of the link. So it's really three pieces across, but it's kind of fancy looking for what it is. Now, many people really complain about this bracelet because it uses pin and collars in here. And honestly, those are just awful to work with until you get used to them. I am used to it, so I can manage it now, but oof. I made a video the first time I did it and I was sweating bullets. So if you have not, <laughs> if you have not sized one of these previously, guys, don't do it. Just go to a watchmaker. Um, if you have done it or if you're great with tools, well, have at it. Good luck. Uh, I, I myself can do it now, but not so easy. Okay. Um, we have high polished flanks and this is a rounded surface. No Zeratsu polishing here. However, it's surprisingly high quality looking for the money. And uh, even the cheaper versions of this same watch still look like dynamic. The case back is beautiful looking. I really got, you know, look, people complain about the rattly bracelet. Um, but I think the biggest complaint really can be had about the clasp. You know, you have your stamped, um, you have your stamped me metallic clasp, um, but you know, Consider the price point. You know, I do. So would I rather see this um, milled out? Of course I would. Work your way up to Grand Seiko and it is milled out. At this level though, it doesn't trouble me too much. You can spend two to $600 on these guys. And um, so I, I think we're in the right ballpark here. It certainly is functional. And here's the funny thing. This, this clasp that I'm complaining about is actually somewhat better than clasps used on the Rolex Submariner and the Rolex sports lines uh, well into the well into the 90s through the 90s and into the very beginning of the 2000s um, this is better than what Rolex used so yeah you can complain about it but trust me there's Rolex there's vintage Rolex watches out there worth seven eight nine ten thousand dollars that have a clasp on it that's worse than this double locking action and then the clamshell locks down and you have a double deployment um, on each side and you know it's branded there this will pick up a little bit of scratchies but not too much um, and then you have some micro adjustments guys i love me some micro adjustments now naturally i prefer the glide lock clasp on the rolex or that sliding clasp on the omega and even grand seiko has an adjustable clasp without micro adjustments on their divers but you know Again, for the price point, not bad. Don't stick a paper clip or a thumbtack there or you will scratch up the flank of your clasp. Be like me, be like Mark. Use a paper clip. No, I said don't use a paper clip. Use a, use a toothpick. That's what you want, use a toothpick. If you use a toothpick here, you will not scratch up anything. And uh, it's handsome. Now, I love me a day date complication. I wish expensive watches had that. I don't know why that we have been trained that only cheapo watches have the day-date complication at 3 o'clock, but it has been that way since the 70s, to the point where, guys my age, I am an old man, 
we see the day date at three o'clock and, and it just smacks of cheapness. Um, but gosh, it's incredibly useful because when you get to be old, you might forget what day it is. And you, in Rolex, in Rolex, you have to go up to the president to get the day and the date complication. And here it is on this $500 Seiko Blue Lagoon. So I like it quite a bit. Um, the shape of the minute hand is intended to draw the eye because it's a proper dive watch. So it's good for timing. We'll talk about the bezel in a second. I really love the pop of that yellow seconds hand on this guy. And, um, and of course, our minute indicators at the quarter hour are also yellow. So that ties in to the yellow seconds hand. So that's really terrific. Now, the bezel insert is nice. I like it. It's colorful. It is aluminum. You got to be careful. You could scratch it, I suppose. It has a loomed pip here at 12. What people complain about in relation to the Seiko Turtles is the quality control in terms of the alignment of the pip to 12 o'clock. This one lines up. And, um, but, hmm, uh, not all of their watches is it going to align. And it does not have the most satisfying turning action. There is a smidgen of back play. It's not a lot, guys, but there is a smidgen. So I don't want to say I hate this bezel, and I am a bezel maniac. Let me, let me tell you what. I pick up a dive watch. Literally, the first thing I do is turn the bezel. It's the very first thing I do. It's my fidget spinner. I want it to be an enriching, happy, satisfying OCD experience, okay? And uh, I would say this rates as a B minus. Let me uh, put the watch up near the microphone. And I'm sure you could hear that soft click there. It's a little mushy. So it's not horrible. I gave it a B minus. Believe me, I have felt worse. But um, the, the watch makes up for it in other areas, one of which is the loom. Now, before our OCD, all of us gets fired off. Let me return this to the 12 o'clock position. There we go. Nice alignment. If you're buying one of these used, you might inquire as to whether it aligns right there. And uh, if you're buying it new in the store, well, spin it around and make sure it aligns. Unless you're the kind of person who doesn't care, but you're watching, you're a watch guy, you care. Uh, I'm pretty sure you care. Tell me in the comments, do you care about the exact alignment? If that was off a half a millimeter, would it bug you? It would, bug, would, it would bug me, and I think it is a little off on my patty edition. I mean, I can line it up by turning it and then backing it up a little hair, but I, I don't like having to do that. What's fantastic about this watch, unparalleled, far better even than Rolex, is the loom. Now, these markers are applied, and they are heavily fill, filled with a proprietary Lumabrite substance that either Seiko manufactures or they buy out of... Switzerland, I'm not sure which, but I know it's proprietary to them, and you will not find a better illuminant in the entire watch industry, bar none, okay, bar none. Now, if you have tritium tubes, it has advantages in the sense that you don't have to charge it, but it will not glow as bright as this. It will glow as long or longer, but certainly not as bright. So let's take tritium out of the mix, stick with apples to apples, this beats chromolite, Rolex's chromolite loom. It beats it by a country mile for one tiny smidgen of the price. And of course, the, the crown is offset at the four o'clock position. So guys, I'm not trying to tell you that this is a super fancy watch. I'm just trying to tell you that for the money, I really, really like it. What do you think? Do you have one of these? Is it a dirty habit? I'll tell you what, if you can't afford thousands of dollars for a watch, but you can afford into the hundreds for a watch, I think this is a fantastic candidate to be your one and only watch. It's rugged. It's waterproof. This guy is good down to 200 meters of water resistance. It will glow in the dark. You can time a pizza in the oven. It's just fancy enough to be a tool watch with a little bit of attitude and a little bit of style. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit, guys, I love me a Seiko Turtle and this Blue Lagoon Edition, one of my all-time favorites. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Take it easy on me, and please subscribe to my channel.